baby, you know it's obvious. I'm a sucker for you. Palestinian border authorities say Egyptian mediators have arrived on the scene in the Gaza Strip for talks with the territory's Hamas rulers. The delegation of Egyptian officials crossed into Gaza Wednesday. As an unofficial ceasefire between Israel and Hamas appeared to hold after a round of heavy cross-border firing. We've been talking about all this, including the recognition of the Golan Heights as part of Israel from President Trump this week as he stood side by side. Uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel and uh, Barry Nussbaum of the American Truth Project is keeping tabs on all this. He has sources on the ground, a daughter in college there, and he just happens to know what's going on. Barry, welcome back. Uh, thanks, Amy. Good to continue the conversation with you. We have a lot of video because you're over there often, a video that you shot of the territory. Talk about, you know, the Golan Heights. Why did it matter that, that President Trump took this uh, this step. Um, I, I know it's very critical in the defense of Israel. And uh, so why did the Golan Heights matter? And, and we're going to show some video and you can tell us about it when it when it pops up. Well, it's it's quite simple, actually. Uh, Syria is, for all intents and purposes, no longer a uh, operational country. It's a territory surrounded by enemies of the people within each enclave. You've got the Syrians, you've got the Iranians, you've got the Russians and you've got the biggest terror group in the whole area called Hezbollah. So the video you're showing now, Amy, was filmed by me at the Gaza border. That field is now filled with tanks and armored personnel carriers ready to cross that border if necessary. Up in the Golan, you've got not one enemy, but five enemies or so of both the United States and Israel. What used to happen in the Golan before 1967 is Syrian troops would sit up there and rain fire down on the farmers in Israel. All over northern Israel and the Sea of Galilee were just literally a mortar away from a rocket-propelled grenade, a long-range rifle, machine gun fire, Katusha rockets, and so on. And they'd sit up there and take pot shots and kill people on a regular basis. When they uh, had the war against Israel with the intention of wiping out Israel in 1967, mm -hmm. Israel recaptured the Golan from basically returning it to Jewish hands as it had been for thousands of years before. Israel will never give it back because it would be suicidal for the defense of northern Israel. And it's in the best interest of the United States, as President Trump just stated, because all the enemies of the United States are just on the other side of that border. I filmed at Syria on the border uh, last year. You could see UN troops with their UN insignia right next to Hezbollah troops, and the UN does and did nothing about it, and they never do. Why? Because Hezbollah would kill them if they did anything about it. If Israel ever gave it back, it would be impossible to defend northern Israel, which is why Israel annexed it in 1981, and President Trump, and I think he was right, blessed the annexation this week at the White House. It's good for us, it's good for Israel, it's bad for Hezbollah, bad for Russia, bad for Iran, and bad for the brutal dictator Assad. Everybody on the northern side of that border is a brutal, murderous thug, and none of them should or could ever be trusted by either the United States or by Israel. If you go and look at it, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And I know you've talked to some people in Israel today. Um, and the, the latest, these Egyptian mediators have arrived on the scene. What should we expect from that? Anything? Well, Egypt wants it calm because it's better for Egypt. And Egypt wants it calm because it's better for the United States and for Israel. I can tell you from talking first to my daughter, she's got three friends that are in uniform that are at the Gaza border with their units right now, waiting to find out if they're going to cross mm -hmm. or go back to base literally waiting for a signal for either the war to start or for the troops to back down. I assure you, if any more missiles fly across the border from Gaza into populated Israel, it's going to be a very aggressive response, and it should be. No country in the world puts up with what Israel does, and for the life of me, I can't understand the call first, empty the building, then blow it up response of the IDF. I think they have to step up the response, and if they do, the missiles will stop crossing the border again. 
IDF, Israeli Defense Force, always on guard. It's a completely different way of living in Israel, isn't it, Barry? And, and I know that you, you're more than just invested there because you're an American of Jewish faith, right? Jewish faith? Exactly. And also, your daughter goes to school there, so all of your eyes are always posted on Israel, indeed. Absolutely. When it's a family member who tells you, don't worry, Pop, uh, the bomb shelter in my apartment building was opened up tonight, and uh, we did a drill so we can get downstairs in under a minute if a missile is on its way. It's because she goes to school in Tel Aviv, and the missile that blew up the house hit a suburb of Tel Aviv. So there's millions of people literally practicing to go to bomb shelters. What you're showing on the video now is what I shot in Starot. That's the town behind the field that I shot last year. Every single building there has shrapnel holes in it. And that bus stop I'm talking in front of yeah. is a mobile bomb shelter. So if you're standing outside, you run inside a three feet of concrete and steel so if it, there is a direct hit, you probably will live. Unfortunately, Starot's across the street from Gaza, so they have between three and seven seconds to get to safety. And that means every kindergartner is under the same timeline as every adult. You don't make it, you die. It's just that simple. It is an entire, as, as I said, a different way of living because you're always on guard. Everything's always fortified. Border wall security there is no joke. Um, you got a call there, Barry? And so, well, you might, it might be breaking news from Israel. Um, but uh, it's, I, I don't think we can emphasize enough that they, all, they are always on guard. I just from being there on the ground and having your daughter there, and, and people, I don't know if people realize that doesn't everyone in Israel, they, they all join the military and sign up, don't they? Yeah, everybody that is a citizen uh, will go in and do their service. My daughter will do her service uh, in the next year. Uh, another one of my sons will start his service next year. So it's something that is unlike what we have in this country. There is so much responsibility and maturity among the young people in Israel because they know that their country will only survive if each one of them goes and serves and protects their country. And these young ladies and young men grow up very fast because they all go in at 18. It's a big difference from the United States where for some reason we look down on our military, at least those on the left, when the rest of us proudly are grateful for their service as well we should be. We are free because they put their lives on the line for us. And in Israel, everybody puts their line their life on the line for the rest of the country. So it's a lot different than here. We could learn something from the Israelis, I think, uh, in terms of how they respect the men and women in uniform. I, I sure wish we would, and there they are. So, so Barry, I've got 20 seconds, but did you say your son and daughter, I know your daughter going to college there, have they resettled there, in fact, making Aliyah, returning to the homeland, as they say? Yeah, my daughter has, and my son will be going uh, late this year to do the same thing. They'll huh. be dual citizens of the United States and Israel. How about that? Well, the, the prophecies of the Bible coming true as the, the Jews to go back and resettle that land. Barry, uh, we're out of time, but, but will you keep us posted on everything? Absolutely, I'll be in touch. We'll find you at americantruthproject.org. And thank you so much, and God bless to your son and daughter and everyone over there.